fruition every single time. You don't allow an offensive touchdown in this game. Pretty dominant effort for the 49ers. And the funny part is I don't think they played near their ex like, you know, near their elite level of play that we've seen. I think that they had a couple of mistakes for sure, and they still ended up winning by 18 points. I completely agree. I I feel like the Seahawks, it's so interesting because obviously Russell Wilson doesn't look super, I mean, he's looking a little more impressive now that he has Sean Payton, but his transition to um, the Broncos hasn't been as stellar as anticipated. But I feel like, at least for 49er fans, a lot of the fear um, with going against the Seahawks kind of came with Russell Wilson. Like, I feel like right. if the Seahawks had Russell Wilson last night. I still would have been much more scared even with them down because it felt like the game had to be two seconds left on the clock over for them not to have a chance. Like you always thought that Russell Wilson was going to be able to come back and throw a moon ball at the end. And I feel like too many hearts of 49er fans had been broken by him um, bringing them back. And now that he's gone, it kind of feels like Seattle isn't, isn't the boogeyman anymore. And I had, I heard someone talking about this before the game when they were talking about the players on the 49ers a lot of those players weren't around for the like hardball years for you know a ton of the Russell Wilson years so they don't even have that same fear of the Seahawks that like like fans are more scared of the Seahawks than the players are because so far right. under this kind of new team that the 49ers have um they they have competed with Seattle in the last two years completely um, like I said, not even look like they were they were in the same league. I was I wasn't impressed by Seattle's game plan at all. I, I was talking to a friend. I'm almost never impressed by by Deacon Metcalf for for the name that he has in the NFL. And like I think if people were to size him and like Debo or him and Ayuk up, I feel like D- Metcalf has as good or better of a skill set physically and maybe like traits wise as both of those players but when they're all in the field Metcalf really never um impresses me much and and I found it kind of funny that was Ward was getting under his skin yesterday I the camera kind of panned to him and he was yelling at Geno Smith uh I think asking for the ball more and then on the very next offensive play Geno Smith throws in the ball and uh he doesn't catch it and I was just like Sucks to be you. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think when you talk about DK Metcalf, um, it's it's an intriguing topic because Metcalf really, the way that he wins a lot are those go routes because he's a unique athlete, right? Such a, he, he's a big receiver. He's 6'4", 230, but he's got elite level speed. And so when you put someone that big and is able to run go routes at the success level that DK does, it usually generates the success. And that's kind of why in my preview, even though I had the 49ers comfortably winning, I believe, by like 14 points or so, I thought that the reason that, you know, Seattle could score an offensive touchdown is because one of those go balls usually goes DK's way. The 49ers have a good game plan usually against Geno Smith and against those deep balls, but one usually goes DK's way. That wasn't the case. The 49ers yeah. were prepared. They clearly said, Trevorius Ward, you got one-on-one coverage. And, it, I mean, I, I think they game planned well. They knew kind of what Seattle wanted to run. And it's I, I don't think there's too much variation in what they ran from last year and that trying to hit those go uh, you know those deep balls and so the 49ers kind of just executed their plan to perfection and that's the way you eliminate you know a top receiver like DK Metcalf out of the game you understand the route tendencies that he tends to have you understand where they tend to target him and then you try and eliminate those opportunities kind of I completely agree and I wasn't I also wasn't impressed with their run game now I know that they were struggling with injuries but it just seemed like on all sides of the ball where I thought where I made up, okay, this is where the Seahawks could exploit the 49ers. It felt like the 49ers really came came out to play. And I, I actually predicted 13 to 31 as the score. And then um, I was on with Jose and he kind of was like, he, he was like, that's too low for them. And the, the interesting thing is when I predicted that, I predicted similar to you that DK would get at least one touchdown. But really the 49ers defense only gave up six points. The other one was kind of, um off a little bit of a mistake so I I was extremely impressed with the 49ers defense in this game I felt like as good as the offense did and as good as Brock Purdy played for I want to say like 90 percent of his game I think this battle was really won in coverage and in the defensive line and the sacks that they were able to get when you look back at this game 
do you think that the 49ers look more impressive or that the Seahawks actually look like maybe less of an opponent than some people expected them to be? Um, I, I don't know if the 49ers look more impressive. I wouldn't say I came away from this game saying I'm more impressed by how the 49ers have operated. I did think I thought the score would be similar. Um, I, I think maybe uh, it's more so an indictment on the Seahawks. A lot of people, at least recently, especially with the 49ers slide, thought the 40, uh, thought the Seahawks you know, had a chance to win the division. And I thought that those talks, even when the 49ers were losing three straight games when Seattle was number one in the NFC West, I thought those talks were kind of far-fetched just because when you look at the matchup, between San Francisco and Seattle. San Francisco just has the much better matchup. And I think that that kind of aids them in this effort and trying to get things done. And so I think that that's kind of the way that I look at it. And I don't know even if it's an indictment on Seattle as a whole team, but there is a game plan on how to defeat them. And I do think that the the hype around them has simmered down a little bit because they're not as good necessarily as people initially thought. They came into this game even. I think their point differential was negative. It was negative two coming into this game, despite them being six and four, because they've been blown out and then they've won a couple of close games. And so I think it's more of an indictment that Seattle's a good team, but I don't think that they are in the competition with the 49ers right now to win the number one seed. I completely agree. 